I hope you already went through uh, the previous video where I explained Python data structure series and data frame. So in this video, we will be covering how to retrieve the rows, columns, or basically subset of any data based on a condition from the data frame. So let's get started. Uh, so for this video, we will be using the global sales data and I have uploaded a market fact CSV file. Uh, so in the Google Colab, so I'm using the Google Colab for this video. So Google Colab is, uh, is a browser based uh, tool where you can write the Python code and also run the machine learning models as well. So I have, so in to, to upload the file, you just go to this and then uh, that's the folder, folder drive and then you just go and click this upload a session storage and uh, I'll give the link of this file as well So you can just go and upload that in your Google Colab. So make sure when your Google Colab is Not running. So uh, like if it is idle for some time So Google Colab will shut down the the disk and the RAM uh, assigned to you and in that case you will not able to access this file you need to upload that again so other ways you can upload that in your drive so so yeah but for now we'll go simple and then upload that so this is the file we'll be using okay so let's import this file first okay so now the like, file is imported i am uh, using the head so that gives the top five rows and these are the different column this file is having so in order to select the rows in the data frame it is similar to we do the indexing in the numpy array so it start with the start of the index and the end of the index and that will subset the rows according to the start and end of the indices so for an example if we want to pick up from index 2 to 6 then we just give 2 to 7 so let's run this so now it starts with the 2 and end at the six so that's the way we can pull up uh, the rows so and also if we want to select the alternate rows so what we have to go with is start of the index and the end of the index that it will go to the end of the file and then it will skip by two and then as I'm giving head so it will show the top five so if I just run this so five and then starts with the five and then seven so just step over so that's the syntax so that's the way we can pull up the rows uh, again it start uh, the data frame name start of the index end of the index and then semicolon step over if you want to step over uh, uh, skip the rows by step over number so if it is two it will skip over so let's see how we can pull up the columns so there are two simple ways to pull up the column first is the data frame name and co column name uh, in the square brackets or we can use the dot notation as well so let's see if I want to pull up only the sales so let me run this so now it pulled up the sale and you will see that it is actually giving us the array so the result giving the series though so the result when I giving a single column name so it gives us a series not a data frame and the other way to pull that is using the dot notation and in case i want to actually pull that as a so uh, as a data frame so there is other ways also so let's see first of all how it looks like so now you can see that it is a series so the result is a series so if i give in the square brackets a single column name then please note the result will be always a panda series it's not a data frame but in case we want to have the result of a data frame so we will see how that also but let's say in order to pull multiple columns we have to give that as a list inside the square bracket so this is the outer square brackets and inner square brackets it's a list so i'm giving three columns so let's see the head so now it's pulling only three columns and the result is again a data frame result is a data frame in this case but if you're pulling a single column it's a series 
and uh, let's see so yeah so you can see the result is a data frame and again like if we want to pull up a single row single column and we want this as a data frame so we have to give inside as a list so two square brackets so now you can see the result is a data frame so now you have seen how to select the rows and columns of the data frame and uh, now we will see the other ways to pull the data from the data frame so pandas actually recommend that way it is more flexible so there are two main ways of uh, uh, basically pull up the data so one is position based and other is label based so uh, we will see one one by one so both of this method actually help to select single element or a cell as well and uh, single and multiple rows as well as single and multiple columns and multiple rows and multiple columns uh, so the first type is position based indexing so it works actually that i can pull the data using the integer indices so how that works is uh, so i have to define that inside the square bracket so i'm using ilog uh, method so i have to define that inside the square brackets and uh, there is a comma so the comma separates the row and the column so the left side gives the rows and the right side gives the column so if i am very specific i want the second row and the fourth integer so i give the data frame name and the uh, i lock and then the second and the fourth so if i run this so it pulls the specific number so let's first see the head of this as well so let's say if i want to see the head so what i can do is dot head okay so now the second row and the fourth column so this is the second row and the fourth column so this is the specific number so you can see now it's giving a specific number and let's so now if i want to select a single row and all the columns so i just have to give the row number and i don't need to provide the column number if i just leave it as a blank pandas and pandas by itself understood understand that okay i want all the rows so if i run this so what will happen here is uh, it's pulling all the columns for fifth row and uh, you can see it's it's like these are the different actually uh, columns and these are the different values so and it's equivalent to i'm giving actually the colon so that means pull all the columns for fifth row and then let's say i want to select multiple rows so what i have to do is now i need to give inside a, a list inside the square brackets so this is a list so now three four seven so what it will do is it assume now it's i want all the columns for these specific rows and then it's equivalent to I'm giving a list and then list is uh, the on the left side of the column uh, of the comma and the right side is the semicolon the colon that means like give me all the rows and uh, now let's say I want to select the range of integers so the now I have to give four to eight so it's assuming starts from row four and then go until eight so and then it's assuming now i want all the columns because there is no comma is defined so if i run this so it is going four five six seven all the way to eight but not the eight so again it's equivalent to i'm giving uh, after the comma a colon that means give me all the rows and then if i want to select a specific column so on the left side i just give the colon so that means give me all the rows for second column so if i run this so it's giving me all the rows for second column so it starts from zero to all the way to eight three nine eight and then if i want like a specific multiple columns for all the rows so i can just give the range of the column and it will give me all the rows and let's say i want to select a range of multiple rows and multiple columns so i just give the range of rows and the column so now this summarizes the first one position based uh, indexing where i can pull the data using the uh, the indices now the second one is actually the label based indexing so what actually 
I can use the labels instead of the index number. So what is happening here is, uh, so for an example, if you will see that I can use customer ID or basically, uh, let's say what are different columns it is having. So I don't need to use always the integer as my indices. I can use a column, I can make any column as in my indices and then use that for pulling the data from the system. So let's see how this works actually. So uh, so first of all, let's say I want to pull. Uh, so previously what I'm, I was doing is I was giving always the numbers. So I'm giving column two to five and here I'm giving like three to eight, I'm giving second column. But here what I can do is I can give the column name. So, uh, so what I'm doing here is, so first of all, the syntax is instead of I, it's just LOC. So I'm giving second row on column is sales. So what it will do here is it will go pull up the second row and the sales column. So this is more specific. If we go above, it is second row and the fourth column. But here I'm not giving the number. I'm giving the name. So when you are using the name, actually the label, then you give dot LOC. So similarly, if I'm doing here five, so what it is doing here is it pulls actually the fifth row and all the columns and then this is equal into comma colon so give me the fifth row and all the columns and then it is similar uh, that i want multiple rows so i can define that as a list inside the square brackets and this is equal into uh, same like comma uh, separated by the colon so that means give me these three rows and all the columns and this is again i i can give the range also so i can give me four to eight range and then uh, what i'm saying here is uh, for all the columns so this is equivalent to giving the comma uh, and then so now the last piece is actually i want to make set org id as my indices so what i'm saying here is set this one as index instead of keeping the numbers uh, so like if I make this was an index, so then what I can do is instead of giving the index, the integer index that I was giving previously in uh, ILOC, I can just give the LOC and then give the row as a label. So here I'm saying give me this specific row and these are specific columns. So now what it will do is it will pick up the these columns and this specific row. And similarly, I can select multiple rows and multiple columns. So, so this I'm giving inside the list. So when I run this, what it is doing is it pulls all these rows and the columns for this. Uh, so now let's see how you can get the subset of data frame based on some conditions. So we will be using the same data set here. So, uh, so often you want to select the rows which specify a given condition. For an example, you want to uh, get the data, let's say you want to get the sales where the sales is greater than 3000 or basically all the orders between a specific range or when the profit is less than some numbers. So the best way to do this operation is using df.loc, the log. In, so since uh, the i log, i loc would require you to remember the integer column indices which is again a tedious work so we will use the uh, the data frame dot loc uh, for this so let this let's see this for example so for say for an example you have to pull from sales greater than 3000 so let's see first of all how our data frame looks like so df dot head okay so this is our data frame so uh, now I want to get the sales which is greater than 3000. So if I just run this, uh, the dot column, so what it is doing is uh, we get the Boolean array which correspond to true when the sales is greater than 3000 and uh, it is false when the sales is less than 3000. So what it is doing here is when you run this dot LOC, it's actually pulled wherever the value is true. So when I run this, so what it is doing is wherever it's false, it's it's just leaving those rows behind and then pulling wherever it's true. So that way it's easy to pull and it's showing like how many rows are there and 10 columns. So uh, what I can do here is it's similar to like I want to pull all the rows. So comma, colon, uh, 
so that means it's by default understood like i am pulling all the rows and this is alternate ways also like we saw that in other places and then let's say i have a condition where i have specific conditions so for an example sales is greater than 2000 or basically it's less than 3000 and profit is greater than uh, 100 so uh, i i can give multiple conditions separated by the end operator so if i run this uh, so first it is checking this condition so wherever it's true so then it's checking this condition and then it's checking this condition and combining all these as an end operator so when it comes true it pull that row and it is semicolon so pull all the columns for that specific row and that way it's going through each row and then pulling uh, so uh, not each row so first of all it's a vectorize operation so that means it's run all together and then i can define our operator also here so when it is sales greater than 2000 and profit is greater than or the profit is greater than 100 and similar way i can pull uh, this is a condition for pull, pulling the rows and i can define like i want these columns so i can run this for multiple rows and multiple columns so i hope after watching this video you got a good understanding of pandas data structure series and data frame and how to retrieve raw rows columns or data based on some condition from the data frame and if you like this video then please subscribe to this channel because that gives me a signal that you want more of these videos and thanks for watching this video